What's going on, Drifters? Welcome back to the channel. Since Days Gone released last month on PS Plus, and with the upcoming release on PC next week, I decided to make a little bit of a Days Gone tip guide for those who might need some tips, some tricks, you know, what to do, what not to do. Um, so yeah, welcome to my uh, Days Gone tip guide. Here are 10 tips to get you through your first days of Days Gone. You start off the game basically losing your bike that you put together over the years. And instead you get a replacement bike by Manny, the guy who actually parted out your bike in Copeland's camp. However, this is not really a big, you know, cool bike. It is actually kind of a piece of shit and doesn't even run well. You can upgrade this bike, however, until Oblivion. You can upgrade the wheels, you can, you know, upgrade the fuel tank, the engine, uh, the lamps even. You can upgrade anything. However, here's my first tip. Upgrade your fuel tank and your engine first. Later on in the game, you're going to find out why. Um, but also, especially your fuel tank, you will run out of fuel really fast in the beginning. There's no joke in it. There's no lie. You will run out. Uh, maybe even the first time. Your engine, of course, gets you to A to B. And the faster you bike, the faster you are there. Some missions are going to be really far away. And you want to upgrade that, that engine as fast as possible. Trust me. Especially with fuel. Um, combined with the engine, of course. Like I said, you just need to upgrade upgrade these two. Like, absolutely upgrade them. The first thing you're gonna have trouble finding is ammo and fuel. Now, both of these things can be found around the map. And it's actually really easy to get. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't know. So, here are some tips to uh, you know find fuel and to find ammo. You have several ways to finding fuel. Um, some are a little bit more obvious than others, however. First things first. You can actually refuel at your camp mechanic. Every single camp that you will encounter in this game has a camp mechanic. Whether or not you can upgrade your bike there or not. They will always be able to refuel and repair. However, this is for a price. A more cheap way is however Nero checkpoints. You can find these checkpoints all around the world. And I will absolutely talk about this later on. But every Nero checkpoint has a gas canister. This is because every Nero checkpoint has a generator now this generator will need fuel and don't worry about it the fuel canisters that you can that you're gonna find they will never run out there's not a single one that runs out it's basically infinite fuel now you can find these all across the map so it's easy to just kind of drive near one if you're low on fuel get a gas canister and just fuel up now one thing that people might not know of is that gas stations actually still work you can always find a, a gas canister at a gas station however there's no need for that. You can actually just park right next to one of the tanks. Hold circle. And just, you know, fill up. Now, this is basically just a little extra. But um, if you are at O'Leary Mountain or an ambush camp. Um, it can happen that they have barrels of gas. Same thing, basically, as the gas station. Just park right next to it and you can refill. Um, there is also gas canisters next to it. But, I mean, why get off your bike if you don't have to, right? Let's talk about ammo. So there's three different ways on getting ammo. And let me tell you. Well, let me tell you them. So around this world, you're going to actually find police cars. Now this is also the tip of the game. Uh, and yes, the game gives a lot of tips. But I just want to remind you guys, police cars always have ammo. However, if you open a police car, it doesn't respond. As far as I know, I have tested it. I've looked at it. It doesn't respond. Um... But that doesn't mean the world is any, okay? There's there's plenty of police cars around the world. And sometimes they're even next to each other. You will not really have any issues finding these things all over the roads, all in town. Uh, you will have plenty of ammo. Now, if you just basically cleared out an ambush camp or a ripper camp or anything like that, you can also find ammo on dead bodies. This is kind of like a giveaway. Honestly, it's just logical um just walk over a body and usually you will pick up the uh, uh, ammo automatically sometimes they also have grenades or anything just keep in mind that you know looting dead bodies actually is beneficial however the easiest way is to go to a camp merchant just like every camp has a camp mechanic every camp also has a merchant no matter if you can buy weapons on it you can always buy ammo um it's easy. It takes, uh, you know, credits just like refueling or repairing. But it is the easiest way to do anything in this game. Now next up, tip number three is near checkpoints and ambush camps. These are the most important things in this whole game besides fuel and ammo. 
Nero checkpoints actually provide with health, stamina, or focus upgrades. And ambush camps can actually give you craft recipes. Um, especially the Nero checkpoints, be careful with them. There is a lot of hordes near these checkpoints. And some of these Nero injectors actually can be found in caves. And if you don't know this game, caves is basically where the hordes are sleeping. Most of, most of them, at least. Um, so doing certain ones, make sure to... Locate the Nero Injector and if it's in a cave, be sure to do it at night. Because most hordes, not, not all, but most hordes actually come out at night and go feed or drink somewhere. And, you know, if you time it right, you can just basically slip by, get the Nero Injector and get out before the horde even ever knows you're there. Tip number four, saving and spending bounties, meat and plants. Throughout this game you will find 5 camps, however we're only gonna talk about the first 3, because the other 2 are a little bit of a spoiler. First off, you of course meet Mark Copeland and Copeland's camp. Here you can upgrade your bike, um, but not buy any weapons. However, the second camp is run by Ada Tucker and Elkai, which is the Hot Springs. Here you can find new guns, uh, and better guns for that matter, but no bike upgrades. I suggest not spending any credits, however, on Hot Springs because she will give you so many missions, you won't even need to spend it. However, what do you want to spend it for is the last one and that is Lost Lake. This is run by Iron Mike and Schizo and this will not only give you bike upgrades, but also weapon upgrades. And not any like garbage weapons, they're actually military weapons. Yes, they're actually really military stuff at Lost Lake. Not only that, but also the bike upgrades are so much further advanced than at Manny's that you, 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 your job will drop. Lost Lake is just the camp to invest in, and it's also the one that, you know, doesn't trust you at all. Lost Lake's trust is hard to get, and I suggest spending every single plant, every single bounty on there, because you're gonna benefit of that camp the most. Tip number 5 has everything to do with skills. During this whole world falling apart, you might actually forget sometimes that you also have skill trees. These skill trees exist out of melee, ranged, and survival. Now you might think survival is not that beneficial, it actually really is. All of these trees however have something that you might want to get. Always be sure to look through the skill tree and only unlock what you want to unlock. Now every single time you purchase two things out of one row, a next row will open up. So you know you don't have to buy all three if you don't want to. You can actually save your skills, for example, for um, unlocking a tree and then like getting what you want and then like unlocking another one, for example. Tip number six is more for those who might not know about this. If you have a bandage and you actually hold the left arrow... You will fast heal. Alright. Now you have 5 bandages in a game. And if you already have 5 bandages. Of course you cannot pick up any, any bandages whatsoever. However if you run out of bandages. The arrow will not. Basically will not work. It will basically tell you you don't have heals. That is not always true. This is a tip for those who might not know about this. But you also can open the crafting wheel holding L1. L1 will basically put everything in slow-mo. I love using this, especially when I fight a horde or any kind of freaker that I cannot beat. It will slow time and it will actually buy you some time almost. It's like your extended focus, <laughs> if you will. Bandages can be crafted through the menu, but when you don't have any bandages, the festival doesn't work because it doesn't know that you don't have any bandages, but that you can actually craft them. Always take a look if you run out of heals with the with the left arrow, if you can actually make bandages. Now one tip, I will give you also a little bit of like an extended tip. If the game says sterilizer is full, you most likely can craft bandages. Tip number 7 is for every single loot goblin of you guys. Loot. I can't stress it enough. Loot, loot, loot. Everything. There is loot everywhere. There is loot in little shacks. There is melee weapons to be found in cars. Loot. There is no limit to your loot. Except that your inventory is full. But loot. I, I can't stress this enough. If you don't have kerosene. Loot the gas stations. Make sure to look around the houses. Sometimes there is like stoves. That even have fuel canisters on them. I can't stress this enough. If you run out of melee weapons. Loot. 
there's always a melee weapon to be found. And if you have trouble, make sure to check cars. There can be uh, some on dead bodies. There can be some near cars outside a gas station or on the road. Loot can be found everywhere. And if you are running out of it, you don't loot enough. It's simple. So, you know, embrace the inner loot goblin inside of you and just, you know, loot. Tip number eight is for everyone that is actually new into this game. Don't take on hordes until you're ready. Also, a little bit of a sub tip um, number one. Hordes don't respawn, so if you take out 50 of them out of the 100, the 50 that you killed will not respawn. There might be some, you know, freakers that will be drawn to the gunshots. They are usually not part of the horde. Um, it happens. Sometimes I actually draw freakers to myself more than anything. Um, they don't count as a horde, and if you clear the horde, it will give you an achievement. But just know that you don't have to, like, face the entire horde in one day. Especially with the bigger hordes, it might be a really good suggestion to sometimes just run. Another tip, however, is that if you have a horde nearby a camp, you can actually drag that horde to the camp if you really want to. You can lure it um, towards, you know, a camp, an, an encampment with your bike. You can run towards it and this camp will actually clear the horde. Um... However, I do not suggest doing that because you can actually get yourself killed with it. I actually happened to find a horde near Lost Lake, or well, one of Lost Lake's gardens. And I didn't know. I didn't know it was a horde. I, I just thought it was some freakers. I looked up and there was like maybe 30, 40 of them. And they all came after me like bits by bits. And this whole, the, the, literally the guards of that garden actually killed this whole freaking horde for me. Um, sometimes you get lucky. Alright, sometimes you get lucky with this, but I strongly advise not to take on hordes until you're ready and if you really want to. Um, you don't have to kill hordes. There is two missions in, in this game, and no, I will not spoil it, but there's two missions in this game where you actually need to fight a horde. And yeah, honestly, it's just, you know, whatever you want. But yeah, I, I suggest not doing it. Tip number nine, just keep rolling and burn everything. Fire is literally your best friend into this game a lot of freakers a lot of animals don't like it when you set them on fire now especially with boss fights i recommend throwing molotovs shooting those fire arrows that you might have uh, do everything um with killing wolves for example or or bears in a wild i would not suggest using fire but if there's like a big enemy and you don't feel confident use fire it will literally piss it will piss them off and but it will also hurt them a lot now However, one thing a lot of people might forget about is that you also can, you know, roll out of the situation. No, I'm not kidding. Literally. You can actually roll with R1 if you have enough stamina. Now, this doesn't take a lot of stamina, especially later on. But um, if an enemy charges at you, sometimes they will pause a little bit. It will be like a sort of slow motion. If they do that, you can roll out. You can literally just press R1, uh, hold you know, press R1, hold the joystick to the right, and you will roll right. Hold it to the left, press R1, you will roll to the left. And that's the best way to dodge anything, and it is what I do all the time. Um, if you keep rolling, literally, they won't be able to hit you. Now, of course, this doesn't really work with a horde, but if there's a bear or a big freaker, yeah, it will help. Don't worry about it. Tip number 10 is maybe the most important one. Don't be afraid of the freakers. Yes, they will run at you, like, absolute cannibals yes they might kill you a few times but honestly they're not even that scary throughout the game you will meet new freakers you will meet new threats and honestly i suggest not being afraid of the game there will be some jump scares now and then where a freaker just suddenly grabs you where there's a wolf just suddenly behind you where there's a nude hiding in a car and just jumping out and yes sometimes the freakers actually do kind of pretend they're dead in a car i didn't know they did this until i played it for the second time and I found out that sometimes they're alive. <laughs> I suggest just not being afraid. And I know this is maybe like a, a weird tip. But if you see the game as actually just a fun game. You're going to have a lot more fun. Than when you see a horde and freak out the entire time. So I hope I uh, kind of helped you guys with these tips. Uh, may maybe some of you already knew these tips. Maybe not. Um, I have more in store. I do have like maybe 10 more. Or 20 more that I can give you. 
Um, the game does give a lot of tips, but sometimes it is easy to just kind of sum it up, you know. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more tips or for a different game, for example, for like Horizon Zero Dawn, um, let me know. I'm happy to make more of these. It's my first time trying this. And honestly, I, I just had a lot of fun just getting footage for this alone. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.